In today's video, what is sustainable lean? Is this sustainable? Is this sustainable? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from Pro Physique. In today's video, I'm gonna break down just what is sustainable. How lean can you get, okay? Now, this comes from somebody who's been dieting down and getting lean for bodybuilding competitions and coaching people for more than a decade. So if you look here at a physique that I'm gonna display, you know, when I'm starting to get ready for competitions, it's a process of losing body fat over a number of weeks and months to get myself ready for stage. Now, there are certainly places that I get to, probably like here, I'll show you some of the more lean states that I've gotten, certainly not sustainable. In fact, once you reach a place where your body fat is this low, what tends to happen is, you start to really suffer as far as energy, hormones, your training suffers. You might even start losing muscle because your performance in the gym begins to suffer. But we can talk about what is sustainable. Where can we get to? Because there's also a place where, hey, I feel great right now. So is this sustainable? And how lean can you be? And I'm gonna tell you exactly how to look leaner and sustain it better. Let me read you the question. So it comes from my Instagram direct message. So thank you guys for sending me great questions. So I'm gonna put the question on the screen here and then we're gonna discuss it. I've been building muscle for a few months now and I want some help setting up my macros. I'm five foot eight, 160 pounds and the calorie calculator says I need 1,950 calories to lose two pounds per week. I was wondering if you could help me set up my macros to get lean. I would like to be a sustainable type of lean though. I'm not looking to enter competitions. I would rather just not have most, if not all, visible fat gone. So first things first, you, you went to the calorie calculator, that's awesome. We've also built a free macro calculator, completely free. It's under our competitions tab. I'll put the link directly to it below, but that is where you can actually put in some information. It's actually much more detailed than our calorie calculator and it's gonna give you your macro breakdown. It can even tell you how much to eat per meal. Even if you wanna eat three, four, five, six meals a day, it'll help you break it up. It's really cool. You can do higher protein, lower protein, higher fat, lower fat. It really is kind of clever. And the real value in understanding your macronutrient ratios is it's gonna help you perform better in the gym. You know, if you're just focusing on general weight loss, then you can just focus on a calorie goal. But when you start to get to the specifics of wanting to put on muscle and lose body fat, keep muscle, these are the times when macronutrients become a little bit more important. And as we get leaner, they become more and more important. At 5'8 and 160 pounds, sounds like you're pretty lean already. The problem with the verbiage that you used and you said, I wanna get rid of most, if not all visible body fat is that Oftentimes, the body fat that you want to get rid of is not going to come off at the time you want it to come off. And what do I mean by that? So I love to use this analogy of losing body fat because it applies so well. If you don't actually understand how fat loss works, meaning the fat on our body, as we burn through it and we have less and less, it comes off from different places. So if you think of the body fat on our bodies like a paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll, the fat that you unroll on the outside is going to come off from areas at the beginning of the diet. The last couple paper towel rolls, that's gonna probably be things like the lower abs, the lower back, the very little bit on the lower back that you might have left at the end, glutes, hamstrings. These are the areas that we as bodybuilders and competitors know are what separates, you know, people that are looking pretty good from people that are winning shows and, 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 and dominating on stage because that's the extra time that you have to diet to get that off. It's also the time when typically there is a little bit more kind of restriction required and a little bit more, you know, suffering. You have to really want that off. You're gonna to have to deal with being hungry, low energy. Um, there are times even when you are eating a lot of food, if you're that lean, you just have low energy. So we wanna talk about what is sustainable. And I think it's gonna be a little bit different for everybody, but what I wanna encourage you to do is continue to experiment and put on muscle over the years because I maintain a physique that is much leaner and more muscular than I did 20 years ago. I'm 45 years old, been bodybuilding since I was, I mean, gosh, probably 15, 16 years old. I, I first started picking up weights. I got really serious um, after I was done playing baseball in college and I started lifting weights very consistently. I didn't do my first competition until I was 32, but that process for me has been about consistency, okay? Even if my diet hasn't been great, even if my training hasn't been great, I always love the gym. And so over time, you start to retain more muscle. Your body really gets 
better at putting on and keeping muscle over the career. You've only been training for a few months. So my concern there is that when you diet, if you diet this aggressively, you said you wanted to lose two pounds a week, you're gonna be digging into a little bit of that muscle and it's gonna actually create a little bit of lean body mass loss. Ultimately, over our lifetimes, what we wanna do is put on more muscle and maintain a lower body fat. And I do believe there is a correlation to when you have a little bit more muscle, you can maintain a little bit of a leaner physique. Now, I don't know if this is like our body fat set point actually being correlated to a body weight set point, meaning if we have a same body weight, if we were fatter or if we had more muscle, well, does our body happy in that place? I kind of believe this to be the case because I've noticed that it's a lot easier for me to stay leaner now. I don't struggle as much, I don't deal with as much hunger, and I still stay around 220 pounds with like a visible six pack and those things that I did not have early on when I got to 220 pounds. So for you, what I'm gonna suggest is going through your dieting phase and starting to pay attention to when hunger, when energy and things start to dip. And then I would do what's called a maintenance phase, right? I would bring my calories up, do a diet break. If you haven't watched my videos on diet breaks, those can be very helpful, okay? Don't think of getting to your goal body fat level as something you have to do in one shot. What I like to do with my athletes is we diet down, we lose some body fat for a while, then we maintain for a week, maybe two weeks. This is called a diet break. It really resets the body. You're not so run down all the time. And then you might even be able to get leaner after that with less struggle. There's a lot of you know evidence that I've seen with my athletes that have taken this approach you know, to fat loss and getting lean, 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 stage lean, dieting lean, shredded lean, no body fat lean like you're discussing and being able to stay there longer and even coming out of the diets in a better place because they haven't just done a 12, 16 week diet, right? We've taken these breaks throughout the process. So understand that this shouldn't be something you should be trying to do in three months, six months, okay? This should be something that you're trying to do over the course of several years. Adding muscle, lean body mass, takes time, okay? Think of it as like tiny, tiny little grams of muscle that you're adding to yourself. Every time you work out, every time you, you know, replenish and refuel, your body is synthesizing proteins onto your body, but they're very small amounts. So, how do you do it? Consistency, okay? You just gotta remain consistent. Get in the gym consistently. Get in there, eat well consistently. If you set up these routines in your life, you can get to a place where you can maintain a body fat that you like, the amount of muscle that you like, and you don't have to compete to do that. But I will say, having a very specific goal, like a competition, such as our 90 Day Transformation Challenge that we'll be doing in January, or perhaps something like a photo shoot, if you don't wanna get on a bodybuilding stage, is a great motivator for you to be on plan, okay? If our plans are always undone because of social things, well, you're probably not gonna get to the absolute pinnacle of the physique that you're after. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. Check out that free macro calculator and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or on my Instagram. Talk to you guys tomorrow.